Okay, everyone. So let's start the chapter two, which is about forests and wildlife resources. Now, we share this planet with millions of other living beings, starting from microorganisms and bacteria, lichens to banyan trees, elephants and blue whales. This entire habitat that we live in has immense biodiversity. So this is a key idea here, biodiversity. We humans, along with all living organisms, form a complex web of ecological system in which we are only a part and very much dependent on this system for our own existence. For example, the plants, animals and microorganisms, they recreate the quality of the air we breathe, the water we drink and the soil that produces our food, without which we cannot survive. Forests play a key role in the ecological system as these are also the primary producers in which all the other living beings depend. So the key idea here in this paragraph is that we are living organisms and we are a part of a complex web of ecological system and we very much depend on this. The world doesn't exist you know just for us but we exist as a part of this world and you know in support on, in everything else around us now let us look at the flora and fauna in india now if you look around you will be able to find out that there are some animals and plants which are very unique in your area in fact india is one of the world's richest countries in terms of its vast array of biological diversity this is possibly twice or thrice the number yet to be discovered. Now, you already studied in detail about the extent and the variety of forest and wildlife resources in India in the earlier chapters. You may have realized the importance of these resources in our daily life. These diverse flora and fauna are so well integrated into our daily life that we take this for granted. But lately, they are under great stress, mainly due to insensitivity to our environment. Some estimates suggest that at least 10% of India's recorded wild flora and 20% of its mammals are on the threatened list. Many of these would now be categorized as critical, that is on the verge of extinction, like the cheetah, the pink-headed duck, the mountain quail and forest-spotted owlet and plants like Maducha insignis, a wild variety of Mahua, and Habardia heptaneuron, a species of grass. In fact, no one can say how many species may have already been lost. Today, we only talk about the larger and more visible animals and plants that have become extinct. What about the smaller animals and plants, uh, smaller animals like insects and plants? Now, just a quick note on what do you mean by biodiversity or biological diversity, since this is one of the key ideas in this chapter. So it is the immensely rich in wildlife and cultivated species, diverse in form and function, but closely integrated in a system through multiple network of interdependencies. Now, here is an interesting snippet. So the dimensions of deforestation in India are staggering so this is this is a snippet about deforestation the forest and tree cover in the country is estimated at around 807276 square kilometers which is about 24.56 percent of the total geographical area of which dense forest is around 12.4 percent open forest is about close to like about 9.26 or 10 percent and mangroves about 0.15%. Now, according to the State of Forest Report in 2019, the dense forest cover has increased by 3,976 square kilometers since 2017. However, this apparent increase in the forest cover is due to conservation measures, management interventions and plantation by different agencies. Now, let us understand the different categories of existing plants and animal species. So, this is important we'll be talking of the categories. So based on the International Union for Conservation of Natural Resources, which you call as IUCN, we use the scheme by IUCN, we classify as follows. So we have the number one 
is normal species. So species whose population levels are considered to be normal for their survival, such as cattle, sal, pine, rodents, etc. The second type is the endangered species. Now these are species which are in danger of extinction. The survival of such species is difficult if the negative factors that have led to the decline in their population continue to operate. The examples of such species are black bug, crocodile, Indian wild ass, Indian rhino, lion, tailed macaque, uh, sangai that is brow enter deer in Manipur and so on. The third type of species are known as vulnerable species. So these are species whose population has declined to levels from where it is likely to move into the endangered category in the near future if the negative factors continue to operate. The examples of such species are blue sheep, Asiatic elephant, gang gangetic dolphin, etc. Then you have the fourth category of species that we call as rare species. So these are the species with small population, uh, you know, that may move into the endangered or vulnerable category if the negative factors affecting them continue to operate. There are examples of such species are the Himalayan brown bear, wild Asiatic buffalo, desert fox and hornbill and so on. Then the fifth category of species we have is endemic species. These are species which are only found in some particular areas, usually isolated by natural or geographical barriers. Examples of such species are the Andaman teal, the Nicobar pigeon, the Andaman wild pig, uh, Mithun in Arunachal Pradesh. And then finally you have the extinct species. So these are the species which are not found after searches of known or likely areas where they may occur. A species may be extinct from a local area, region, country, continent or the entire earth. Example of such species are Asiatic cheetah and pink head duck. So as you can see, we looked at six types of species, normal, endangered, vulnerable, rare, endemic and extinct. Okay, and what you need to remember here is what are these type of species, uh, you know, uh, the, the kind of definition of this as well as some examples. Now, here is a little snippet about Asiatic cheetah. As we said that Asiatic cheetah is extinct. So what really happened to them, right? So the world's fastest land mammal, the cheetah, which has this name, Essenonyx, Jubentus is a unique and specialized member of the cat family and can move at the speed of 112 kilometers per hour. That is pretty fast. The cheetah is often mistaken for a leopard. Its distinguished marks are the long teardrop shaped lines on each side of the nose from the corner of its eyes and mouth. You can do a Google search to see the pictures of Asiatic cheetah. Prior to the 20th century, cheetahs were widely distributed throughout Africa and Asia. Today, the Asian cheetah is nearly extinct due to a decline of available habitat and prey. The species was declared extinct in India long back in 1952. Now, as you look at like, you know, the, the, the Asiatic cheetah, it became uh, uh, extinct. So let's try to look into what are some of the negative factors that can cause such fearful depletion of the flora and fauna. So if you look around, you will be able to find out how we have transformed nature into a resource obtaining directly and indirectly from the forest and wildlife. Wood barks, leaves, rubber, medicines, dyes, food, fuel, fodder, manure, etc. So it is we humans who have depleted our forest and life. We are the single most reason for all of these problems. The greatest damage inflicted on Indian forest was during the colonial period due to the expansion of the railways, agriculture, commercial and scientific forestry and mining activities. However, even after independence in 1957, the agricultural expansion continues to be one of the major causes of depletion of forest resources. Between 1951 and 1980, According to the Forest Survey of India, over 26,200 square kilometer of forest area was covered into agricultural land, converted into agricultural land all over India. So substantial parts of the tribal belts, especially in the northeastern and the central India, have been deforested or degraded by shifting cultivation called Jhum, 
a type of slash and burn agriculture now you might just looking at the statistics here that you know before uh, the independence the colonization had led to these problems so the question here you know, naturally is you know are the colonial forest policies to be blamed now some of the environment activists they say that the promotion of a few favored species in many parts of india has been carried through the ironically term enrichment plantation in which a single commercially valuable species was extensively planted and the other species were eliminated for instance teak monoculture has damaged the natural forest in south india and chur pine pinus plantations in the himalayas have replaced the himalayan oak have a think about it do you think that it is just about the colonial policies or did we have opportunities to fix it and do differently after independence now let us continue our discussion on uh, the causes of uh, you know uh, the, the causes of the negative factors which lead to the depletion of flora and fauna so we talked about you know all the agricultural related policies which has led to this problem now let us look at other aspect which is the large scale development project so this is the second one so this one here is all about agricultural expansion the second cause is large scale development projects which have also contributed significantly to the loss of forests since 1951 over 5000 square kilometer of forest was cleared for river valley projects clearing of forests is still continuing with projects like the narmada sagar project in madhya pradesh which would inundate around 40000 hectares of forest that's a lot then mining this is the third reason right so mining is another important factor behind deforestation the baksa tiger reserve in west bengal is seriously threatened by the ongoing dolomite pining it has disturbed the natural habitat of many species and blocked the migration route of several others including the great indian elephant now many foresters and environmentalists hold the view that the greatest degrading factors behind depletion of forest resources are grazing and fuel wood collection so this is the fourth one grazing and fuel wood collection though there may be some substance in their argument yet the fact remains that a substantial part of the fuel fodder demand is met by lopping rather than by felling entire trees the forest ecosystems are repositories of some of the country's most valuable forest products minerals and other resources that meet the demands of the rapidly expanding industrial urban economy these protected areas thus mean different things to different people and therein lies a fertile ground of conflicts so let us look at this example of the himalayan yew the himalayan yew or it's called taxus wallachiana is a medicinal plant found in various parts of himachal pradesh and arunachal pradesh now a chemical compound called taxol is extracted from the bark needles twigs and roots of this tree and it has been successfully used to treat some cancers now you know that cancer treatment is a really big thing in the medicine area the drug is now the biggest selling anti cancer drug in the world the species is under great threat due to over exploitation in the last one decade thousands of yew trees have dried up in various parts of himachal pradesh and arunachal pradesh so habitat destruction hunting poaching over exploitation environmental pollution poisoning and forest fires are the factors which have led to the decline of india's biodiversity so this is some examples of what has led to the um, decline of india's biodiversity other important causes of environmental destruction are unequal access inequitable consumption of resources and differential sharing of responsibility for environmental well-being overpopulation in the third world countries is often cited as the cause of environmental degradation however average american consumes 40 times more resources than an average somalian similarly the richest 5% of the indian society probably cause more ecological damage because of the amount they consume than uh the poorest 25% the former shares minimum responsibilities for environmental well-being the question is who is consuming what from where and how much so the obstruct the destruction of forests and wildlife is not just a biological issue the biological 
loss is strongly correlated with the loss of cultural diversity too so this is this is also another key point that it's not just about what happens in the environment it's also what happens to the cultural di diversity such losses have increased increasingly marginalized and impoverished many indigenous and other forest dependent communities who depend on various components of the forest and wildlife food drink medicine culture spirituality and so on within the poor women are affected more than men in many societies women bear the major responsibility of collection of fuel fodder water and the other other basic subsistence needs as these resources are depleted the drudgery of women increases and sometimes they have to walk more than 10 km to collect these resources this causes serious health problems for women and negligence of home and children because of the increased hours of work which often has serious social implications this indirect impact of degradation such as severe drought or deforestation induced floods also hits poor the hardest poverty in this cases is a direct outcome of the environmental destruction so this is the key part the poverty can also be a result of the environmental destruction thus forest and wildlife are vital to the quality of life and environment in the subcontinent and it is imperative to adapt to sound forest and wildlife conservation strategies